Hello, this is Dave from ERC, and we're still working on the Dancing Wings Eagle. This is the 1200 millimeter version. And you might have noticed in the last video that uh, it was going a little bit fast. At least the voice was going a little bit fast. And it didn't seem normal. But I can tell you, it wasn't sped up. I did not speed up the voice at all. What I did was I sped up the video to make it a little bit shorter because it was like 20 minutes long and I didn't want that much. I wanted about 10 minutes because this is like a three-part series. So that's why I'm talking fast to keep it short. I mean, 20 minutes and you put three parts, that's an hour or more. And I just want to get it down to where each video is more like seven to 10 minutes and that's why I'm talking so fast. But anyway, we're going to be doing the power system on this today. And then we're going to be doing the fins right here. This is the V-tail fins. And we're going to be doing the V-tail setup in the radio so that we can get those working. And remember, later on I'm going to have ailerons, so I'm going to have that in the radio too. All right, so let's get started. Let's just fly right into it. So let's begin by doing the tail feathers. This is the V-tail, and you have to use a triangle piece of wood to glue to to get that V-tail shape. And the manual recommends a certain angle here, and we'll get into that in a minute. So first, let's just get the length of the stick. We're going to have to cut that. In other words, you want to go from the tip right here over to right about here where the edge is. And from what I can tell, it's a little bit less than 8 inches. And I've marked it right here, and we're just going to cut it off with a small hobby saw. So just taking my saw here and cutting it off at that line. So next we want to glue on the triangle of wood using some of the CA. And I'm going to glue it right even with the edge of this back piece. And right up like that. It will stick out, that's normal. So it'll be about like that. So let's go ahead and apply an ample amount of glue. So we know it's going to go right about up to there with the glue. All right, so let's go ahead and apply it all along here. I'm going to get it as much in the center as possible. Just about like that. I want to make sure it's very well centered because we don't want to have it crooked and the plane fly crooked. And then we got to hold it for a while until it dries. So I put some clamps on it just to hold it there while the CA sets up. So I set my digital angle device here at 120 degrees. And the reason for that is I'm going to go with 120 degrees to make the tail feathers look more realistic instead of the recommended 90. So when I go to glue the tail feathers on, I'll just set the angle in here just to keep that 120 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and sand 60 degrees on each side so I'll get that 120 degree angle. So I'm going to have to lean it a little bit and just sand it with some coarse sandpaper just to try to simulate that extra angle. So this hinge groove here goes towards the bottom, so just make note of that. So you want the hinge toward the bottom and the flat at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and apply some of this fabric tack both sides, and I'm going to go ahead and glue it on there. And keep the 120 with my digital angle tool while it dries a little bit. Of course, I'm going to go ahead and put some on here, press it together, and then pull it apart and let it tack up as usual. Got to do the regular thing with this foam tack. So apply some all the way down the whole side. All right, and now I'll do the other one. All right, just pressing them onto the wood. Not looking for the perfect angle right now, just trying to get the glue on there, and then I'm going to pull them apart and let them tack up. Okay, so that's about 120 degrees right there. I put the pieces back on after they tacked up, and I'm just holding them at 120 degrees. Just laying it in the digital angle tool, just to keep that 120 degrees. Just looking down to make sure it's balanced on each side. Just holding it like that, sort of cradled, and I'm going to put a weight on it. So I'm using the fabric tack as a weight, and I'll just keep it like that, and that keeps it pretty even, I think. That might be a better angle of it right there. You can see the digital angle tool underneath it, and the little clamp to brace it. So if anyone's wondering, this is actually the digital angle tool I was talking about. It's a Husky. Don't remember where I got it. Somebody gave it to me for Christmas. So now that the tail feathers are installed, the next job is to glue on the control horns and these little slots on the bottom. So the holes in the control horns are a little small, so I'm going to go ahead and drill them out so that they'll fit the clevises. I'm just going to go ahead and drill out three of them to give me some options. Now that we've drilled them all out, I'm just going to go ahead and clean them out a little bit to make sure they're open. Now I'm just going to use some Fabri-Tac glue to glue it onto the control surface. So I'm just going to find the slot and push it in. And there's a little plate that I'll go and put on the back later. You want the control horn to be pretty much over this notch right here. And then on the back side, we have these little plates here that I'll just go ahead and put some glue on and put it over the top. So just applying a little bit of glue, and then I'll just push it down over the top and then let it cure. And then I'll do the other side. So both control horns are now installed. So now let's install the servos. I'm going to be installing two of these Emac servos, and they are Metal Gear servos. This is what they look like, and I had to shave out a little bit of this plywood to make room for them to fit. 
but it doesn't take much and now it fits right in there. I'm going to be placing the servo so the shaft is towards the front, like this. Alright, let's put the screws in. You'll notice I still haven't glued the bottom of the plane on because I want to keep that open for later when I do the battery box and finalize everything I'm doing now. So just screwing in the screws to hold down the servos and they go into the plywood fairly easily. Next we need to drill out the holes on the servo arms to accept these servo rod keepers. So I'm going to take my drill bit and just drill out the hole. Now I'm just screwing the nut onto the keeper now that I've drilled out the hole. Make sure the threaded part is facing towards the big part on the servo arm which goes onto the servo. Now I'm just going to put a tiny bit of blue Loctite on there. I don't want to get any on the plastic because it might dissolve the plastic. Alright, there it is. Now we'll just let it set up. Now I have both servos connected to the servo tester and set to the neutral position. And I'm just going to place the two arms onto the servos. And I want them going towards the outside like that. That'll just give us some idea how they go. We may have to adjust them later. We don't have to put the screws in right now because we might have to pull the arms off later. Next thing is we want to push the clevises onto the end of the rod. And they go in pretty tight. Doesn't seem like they'll ever fall off. Now I think the idea with this hole is you put some CA in the hole. You can tell me if I'm wrong. And that's supposed to help lock it in place. And I'll just go ahead and do the other one the same way. Putting a little glue on it. And then we'll let it set up. So I clip one of the clevises onto the control rod after pushing it through the body here. And it just seems to naturally lay crosswise like that, so I think I'm just going to stick with crosswise. There'll be less friction right here. So I had to make a little bend just right here to make it fit right. And then I'm just going to go ahead and cut it off right about in this area. Now we can feed it through the hole in the keeper right here. And we'll see how that looks. And there it is inserted in the keeper and I tightened the screw down while keeping the surface even with the tail feather there. Alright, so now I have both servos hooked up and you can see them working right there. So here's my basic electronic setup and I've put a 20 amp ESC right here and the Sunny Sky X2212-13 and it's a 980 kV version 2. You could also use an 1100 kV with this or a 1400 kV. And I've got a D4R2 FreeSky receiver right here, four channels. This is going to be my aileron servo here on my aileron channel. The 1.5 three cell battery. And I've got the VTAIL mix set up in my radio. I've got VTAIL plus ailerons. And you can see right here when I move my aileron stick, the aileron servo is moving. And I'll probably have two of these wide out. And now if I do elevator, you can see that working. And if I do rudder, you can see that action. And that's a VTAIL setup. And that's why I've got 50% here on these. The two channels, channel 2 and channel 4, which is the elevator and the rudder, are 50% mix on each one, mixed into each other. I've got the receiver mounted on a little stick of wood right here. So what I'm going to do is glue this right there so it'll be accessible from the top. Like this where I can get to all the wires. That's the idea anyway. So there's the receiver mounted and you can see I can access all the wires when I take the wing off. And unplug these plugs if I need to change something. And then I've got the ESC mounted right here. And mainly this dowel is holding it from coming out. And I can pull that dowel out and remove this ESC. It's just underneath this piece of wood right here. But it will slide right out of there if I have to get to it. So that's it right there. I think next I have to work on the wing.